Hey guys, welcome back and what an absolutely busy week for Apple. Today I've got even more to show you though. So we're gonna be talking about the iPod Touch seventh generation, which is due for a refresh here any moment. The iPhone 11, there's a ton of new features and kind of specs that have leaked about it. And I wanna show you the perfect iPhone 11, the one of my dreams that I just wish Apple would be bothered to build. And of course there's more. So let's get to it, the latest happenings in Apple. Now I wanna start with something disappointing and that's not the iPhone 11 design, which to me is disappointing. It's the fact that there have been some promising leaks and they've turned out to be absolutely fake. So last night, a story broke that the 2019 iPhone 11 would have the 120 hertz refresh rate display taken straight from the iPad. To me, that would make the 2019 iPhone 11 so unique, so different from any other smartphone out there. And I immediately got excited. That has to be besides dark mode. My number one feature request for Apple is that 120 hertz refresh rate display. Unfortunately, that leak turned out to be fake. So that was just a wish list for Vinny again skin that was reposted as news and no the iphone 11 is not getting a 4000 milliamp battery it will be getting a triple lens camera but not because of this leak and a very valid point that's related to this exact situation is that the leaks game isn't always going to be correct there are bound to be missteps there are so many different sources so it's honestly kind of a miracle that we already know as much as we know so soon before apple releases the products so you know you just have to understand these are leaks they're not 100 percent accurate especially when we're talking about an iphone that's going to be released in nine months i mean there are bound to be changes. All right, so I wanted to share this with you. I've been seeing so much around the internet lately within the last few days about how Apple is just completely derailing with their designs. The new square design is rough. The Cyclops design isn't much better. So I decided to take those ideas, your guys' thoughts, and kind of combine them into the perfect iPhone. And this is what we came up with with the Broke King. So ideally, I would like the 2019 iPhone to share the design with the new iPad. Immediately when Apple released that thing, it just, it was hard to believe that they went back to the design because I loved it so much and finally they were delivering to people what they wanted. Now I want them to bring that to the iPhone as well. Alongside that of course comes USB-C and with the leaked Cyclops design, the one thing I did like about it is a symmetric design on the bottom. So we copied that, give the speaker grills an identical design on both sides of the iPhone. So it's a little bit more even. Now on the back with the lens, what we're looking at, there are two versions. One is Vania Geskins where he took that Cyclops design and literally just threw it in the same orientation, which is what I personally think Apple should do. Then there's this design, which is a little bit cleaner. It's Apple Eye Designer's own version. It has the flash that runs all the way around the camera. And realistically, I think this is more possible than what we're seeing with the flash directly around that little lens. I think that would cause some weird ghosting issues. So I like both. You know, if Apple were to go with any of the new designs, it should be one of these. So what do you guys think? That's my perfect iPhone. Honestly, if Apple were to release this, they would have such a killer phone in sales. Like people are waiting for something new for something fresh and I think this would deliver it especially if you throw a 120 hertz display in it oh man that's just toast toast to all other smartphones it'll be so fluid so smooth with that new design I I'm just afraid for Apple if they don't do something drastic like this oh and also on the front I know this is a stretch but Samsung's already doing it with the hole punch display I thought why not Apple why can't Apple do something like this we have the FaceTime system it's very very tiny just a little hole punch display a little bit larger than Samsung's or possibly even the same size, we'll see. And the earpiece itself is hidden in the bezel. It's a stretch, but I would like Apple to make the notch as tiny as possible or remove it altogether and copy Samsung with the hole punch design. Okay, so it's January, 2019, and we already know roughly what the 2019 iPhone will look like. And now more details are coming about the actual specs and features of these phones. And this is also courtesy of OnLeaks with his source. So they're saying the megapixel counts of the 2019 iPhone 11 will be 14 megapixels at the highest. So that's 14 megapixels compared to the 12 currently offered on the iPhone XS. Everyone knows megapixels don't really matter so much as the sensor size, how much light it lets in. The kind of quality you get usually depends on the size of the sensor, the size of the pixels on that sensor. So his source gives us details on two of the cameras. One will be 14 megapixel, the other 10 megapixel, and we don't know the megapixel count of the third camera. And we also don't know which 14 megapixels refers to the wide angle or the telephoto lens. So we'll have to wait and see on that but a megapixel bump is coming and I'm very excited about that. And I also took to Instagram to get your opinion on the iPhone 11 camera design, which one you would prefer. And surprisingly, more of you would prefer the Cyclops design with that even smaller looking camera than the square one. Personally, I'm on the square side now. If Apple could make it smaller, I see it working with an iPhone and especially in the expansion category going forward, they'll have a lot of room in that lens to work with. So 
you know, the Cyclops design isn't bad, but it's un Apple like. Oh, and there's details about the front facing camera as well. So for the longest time, Apple really hasn't done much with that camera. They made it seven megapixels, which is nice, but the quality still isn't that great. This year, they'll be improving it even further and bumping it up to 10 megapixels. And we've also heard that there will be optimizations to the true depth camera as a result to have a smaller notch. So everything is going to be interconnected here. And Apple's taking the opportunity to boost the megapixel output, which I respect them for. This is where things get interesting. So also in this report, they're saying there are major changes coming to the inside of the iPhone. The iPhone 10 and 10s models have such impressive internals. Honestly, opening this thing up, taking a look inside, you just can't help but appreciate how well planned, well thought out it is. It's like a highway, a highway of connections. It is so beautiful. And this report is saying that Apple is taking that a step further and they'll be optimizing it. Because of the drastic changes to the camera and some new technologies coming to the iPhone, Apple will be massively reworking the insides of the 2019 iPhone. So they're shifting from an L-shaped battery to more of a square battery with the logic board sitting up top instead of to the top right on the iPhone. That's going to be interesting. The article does disclaim also that Apple has still not decided the reigning supreme design. So both of these are still up for grabs and neither one has been settled on as they're still in that EVT stage. And within the next few months, they're probably going to settle on one and we'll certainly find out which one has been chosen. And lastly, the article says USB-C will not be happening this year, that Apple has decided not to add that feature, whereas Makatakar said it will be happening. So a little conflicting there. We'll still have to wait and see what happens, but I would love USB-C on the iPhones to match the iPads and the MacBooks so you can have one standard across all these devices. Okay, and moving on to the iPod Touch 7th generation. Yes, it's coming. Mac Takara says Apple is working on this device. Now, what I don't understand is why. Like, who is still using these devices? Why is there demand for the iPod? And I'm sure Apple is not going to put a lot of effort into this device. It's going to be a parts bin device, guaranteed. They're just going to take what they have, the shell, rework it slightly, add some new internals, and sell it. But I decided to make the best possible version of a device if Apple were to use the parts bin strategy and still at least kind of care about this device. So I gave it the iPhone XR camera. Obviously, I highly doubt it'll get something that high quality, but we still gave it to that. It keeps the same chassis. On the bottom, we removed the headphone jack, just like they did with the iPad. I feel like they would do that to the iPod Touch. We also gave it a wraparound display. Nothing fancy. The Liquid Retina display, it's still an LCD, but it does have a little cutout for the camera. Now, this is an iPod Touch you obviously don't need the more expensive things like Face ID inside of it. Obviously, it's not going to have a fingerprint sensor, at least I don't think. So it's just going to stick with passcode protection and have a slight little camera cutout up there. It's a very cute, bubbly, juicy, whatever you want to call it. But this is my perfect rendition of an iPod Touch 7th generation. And hey, we even gave it the Chrome edition because it's not an iPod Touch if it doesn't have all these scratches. I mean, I have all my old ones and these things age pretty nicely. It's like a patina of scratches. It looks really, really Really cool. Yeah, man, so many memories with these devices. So we gave it a special edition Chrome scratch and fingerprint smudge edition. Realistically, what'll happen with the seven gen iPod is Apple is probably just gonna refresh the processor and the camera. They will do nothing else to it if they were to re-release it. And hey, Apple, this is not a bad idea. If you're on the topic of iPod revival, why not revive the iPod classic? Alvaro Pabesio has this concept and boy, does it get my heartstrings tugging. This is the iPod classic in a 2019 setting, beautiful inner face, beautiful design, beautiful colors. Now, I don't see the use for it. Maybe I'd leave it in a car, have it be a dedicated music device, but you know, it'd be cool. Why not? A retro product that I don't think would cost Apple much to make or sell. New iPads are coming. The budget and iPads are getting refreshed. Now, Digitimes is reporting that the iPad mini 5 and the successor to the $329 budget and iPad are getting refreshed in the first half of 2019. Now, the iPad mini 5, I think, will be very, very basic, just like the iPod touch. It's going to be a parts bin device, a refresh just for the sake of refresh, just to have something new, a little tiny income stream where they otherwise wouldn't have it. That's why I think these devices are going to be very low priority for Apple. They're not going to put anything special into it. No new technologies, just basically what they have. They're going to refresh it. And the case leak supports this design. It's nothing like what we rendered. Obviously, it's a cheap iPad, so it's not going to have that wraparound display. Just a basic refresh of the old design. There might be some more speakers up top. 
other than that, the camera orientation switches just a little bit. Same screen, same overall iPad, just swapped internals. None related to Apple, but I thought I'd throw this in here. The Motorola Razr is getting a ref <laughs> And unrelated to Apple, I thought I'd throw this in here anyways because this phone means a lot to me going back in my history. The Motorola Razr is getting a refresh. The Wall Street Journal is saying that the Motorola Razr is getting refreshed in the same clamshell orientation. So it will be a smartphone, but it'll also fold like the original. I'm assuming it'll be extremely thin also because that was the world's thinnest phone at the time, at least I think. So that's gonna be $1,500 they say available later this year. I'll keep you updated on that. I love revivals of old phones like the Nokia 3310. Hopefully this is a better version of it though. But all right, there it is. The latest in Apple happenings, the Apple Touch 7th generation. Hope it looks somewhat like this. I still don't understand why they're releasing this product, but hey, cool, more power to Apple. The new iPod Touch is coming, new iPads, and the perfect iPhone design. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.